Welcome to my talk. Um, the topic is edge preserving land cover classification refinement using mean shift segmentation. So actually I think it's a little more classification than segmentation, um, but nevertheless it will fit in the session. Um, so if you remember the keynote talks of yesterday and today morning, there was a lot of um, a lot of discussion going on about objects, about segments, and um, about the importance of context in image analysis. And um, maybe you find these principles here in my talk again, but from a well, slightly different point of view because it's a little more on the technical side. So at first, I want to give um, a short introduction or some, some applications that we are aiming at with our land cover classification and then a motivation why to use a mean shift segmentation to refine this classification result. So typically when you are working with land cover classification you want to have somewhat like this. So you have a scene from remote sensing data, here's the Iconos image, RGB channels are displayed and you want to have a classification result somewhat looking like this, which is more or less a mapping of the meaning of certain areas, pixels, regions, segments, however you call it, um, to values or labels that represent um, the, the class membership of these pixels, regions, areas. Um, so here it would be green, would be forest, you have ochre for cropland or grassland, and different shades of gray would be different sizes of building structures. So this is actually done by a, a pixel-wise classification with a support vector machine. So the applications, the different applications, I think you know them all, are for example, land cover analysis, analysis itself, environmental monitoring, or if you listen to the talk of Christian Becker he had on verification, um, is that you could create, verify, or update GIS data by comparing such a classification result to the digital map data. So basically, as I see, there are more or less two approaches. The first is the segment-based or object-based, if you refer to GIS object, and the pixel-based approach. And when using the segment-based approach, you do a segmentation first, either by image processing or by using the GIS objects you have. And then you do a classification of the segments. But since the classification is not always um, or is not done beyond the segment boundaries, there's some information missing. So you need a certain semantics, for example, specifications or rule sets, as they were called here, um, to have the relation between these segments. On the other hand, you have the pixel-based approach where you do a direct classification and you have this classification result for all pixels. But if you want to have the relation to some, some uh, segments, for example, or objects because you want to verify or to update these regions, you also need a mapping. And then you, again, have the problem that you need some semantics. So working with these approaches, there are several different characteristics and the transition from segmentation to classification is quite fluent, depending on the feature space and the features you use. So um, I want to break it down without any loss of generality to two um, different approaches. The one is a low-level segmentation, and low-level I call because I only use the pixel intensities, for example, as features, so no complex features. And on the other hand, I want to have a pixel-wise classification. So for this low-level segmentation, you could imagine you have an image looking something like that. So you have two classes, the blue class, slightly different in these segments, and the green class. And the segmentation, if it's good, would look something like that. So you have two, three different segments, and those two, the blue ones, um, you can't decide if it's the same class, but you have the coherence in image space. So all these little details of the segments and the coherence is given. But then when you use a classification in contrast, you have coherence in feature space, which means you can classify the individual segments or pixels in this case, given by these colors as shown in the image before. So gray is one class and uh, this ochre is another class. But what is miss missing is the coherence in, uh, in image space. So you don't have, um, for example, this link is missing, there is noise inside, and so on. So, the problem that arises is um, you need coherence and feature space to do a proper classification. But 
Coherence in feature space adds smoothing to the classification result. That's not only in classification, but also in segmentation if you use complex um, features. So here's an example. There's a house and some roads and cropland or grassland around it. And again, with the same label colors, um, you have a classification result from pixel-wise classification with a very small neighborhood where the features are extracted. This adds noise, and there are several, yeah, several misclassifications in this image. But when you increase the neighborhood, then um, the classification gets better. But you add a lot of smoothing. But you need to increase the neighborhood to cover all the varying structure sizes, like industries, or for example, small structure like forest or group to, um, groups of trees. So increasing the neighborhood will then, some, uh, uh, at some point, um, rule out all these different details. So therefore, the approach we wanted to propose here is the following, and you can see this slide also as the outline of my, my following talk. So at first I want to talk about a pixel-wise classification we are doing, and independently, so in parallel, we will do a segmentation, a kind of low-level segmentation, so mean, level, uh, mean shift segmentation, and in the end, we will use the result from both approaches to join them, uh, to the final classification result, and I will here show some, some uh, results from our test sets. So we used as input image bands orthorectified Iconos imagery, RGB and infrared channels, one meter ground resolution, but it's not really important which kind of data this is. So doing a pixel-wise classification first follows a very, very typical scheme um, in machine learning, let's say. So you have your input image bands, and then with multiple in input image bands and for multiple scales, so we use a cascade of Gaussian filters here to cover all these scales, um, features are extracted within an n by n neighborhood for each pixel. Features are here the median and the variance within this neighborhood, but it could also be heraldic features or textual features, but these show to be sufficient in our case. And then with all these scales, um, Everything is composed to the feature vectors, which are then sent to a machine learning al algorithm. Here it's a support vector machine, either for training with a training set or for classification of unknown data. So the mean shift segmentation, on the other hand, might look like this. So we have an example here, again, this house. We have coherence in image space with the mean shift segmentation, and it is edge preserving. That's why we chose it. You can also think about watershed, for example. So if you do a segmentation on this image, it might first look something like this, just segmenting it. So basically, it's more or less just um, a quantization of the pixel intensities, of the values. And what you can see here is you have some coherence in image space, but not in feature space, because this cropland is not the same as this. This is all different gray values. But you can adjust the parameters, for example, to get um, larger segments, which might look like something like this. So our setup is that we take the mean of all image bands, since we do not have a gray image, RGB, but also infrared, and then we choose parameters. And the parameters are mainly the color range in which you work and a spatial radius. And we use these parameters on the one hand with respect to over-segmentation, just to avoid flooding to other regions, and on the other hand, um, with respect to the classification parameters for the pixel-wise classification, so that you, um, that you choose, for example, a spatial radius which corresponds to the spatial radius of the feature extraction in pixel-wise classification. With this, we come to the joining of these two results by a weighted majority voting. So here are the results from these two segmentation, or from these two approaches, and what you could do is, because I want to have this edge preservance, that's the main idea, I work based on the segments here in red of the mean shift segmented image. And what I could do now is just for each of the segments count all the pixels from the classification belonging to a certain class, and then the, the dominating class label wins. But we have some more information, because as I said, um, at the segment borders, the classification result is less reliable because you have the smoothing. So in this case, I could use the distance to segment borders. Here, white is a very high dis distance and black is a small distance. The distance as a weight. And on the other hand, I have information about the classification result because I can um, 
use probability estimates and a first to second best ratio to get some certainty information about my result. So given these, I can introduce a weight WP, so a weight W for each position or each pixel. So in this case, some math, the weight, um, we have a weight that um, is made up of the distance at the position P and the certainty at the position P steered by some factor F and we use the logarithm because we want a high influence at the segment borders and not at the center of the segments and then we just sum up all these weights that belong to a certain class and when we sum them up we just compare it for our classes and the resulting label for the segment S is then um, the label that corresponds to the highest uh, weighted sum. So um, here are two examples for for this, these two kind of um, approaches or characteristics I talked to, to, uh, talk to you about. The first is the coherence. So given in this image forest, here's some cropland, here's some build ups, uh, building structure. Um, the classification result shows in this region um, a misclassification. There's some um, building structure classified at the transition from forest to cropland. But using the coherence in image space brought by the uh, segmentation, you can see that these errors are ruled out. The other thing, the edge preservation is shown here. Again, you have an image um, of a rooftop and next to this is some cropland. The classification result would look like this. So it's, it's smoothened and you have errors there, but the classification result that is refined by the segmentation shows that the boundaries align and the errors are ruled out. So now I want to come to the final classification result we made with our test set. So we had validation or test sets um, from scenes in Germany. They were manually labeled with pixel accuracy. Um, we had training sets that were chosen manually on the one hand, and on the other hand, they were chosen from a GIS. They contain a lot of errors, or not a lot of, but some errors, um, and it's a lot of samples, while the manual selected are small training sets. And we have these test sets T1 to T11, and the result when using this test set for training and classifying our unknown scenes um, is shown here. So the most important part is that using only the support vector machine classification gives us a result that is always worse in correct rate um, than using our refinement with the segmentation. And it is only the refinement when counting the pixels or when using the distance as um, a weight using the certainty or using both as weights. And the result is that using just the mean shift segmentation and counting the pixels would improve the result by 3.47%. The distance itself doesn't add any um, important information, but the certainty certainly does, and using both adds some more information. So what is also interesting is that more or less the higher classification results show no no real influence of um, the different weights. But if you look at those classification results that are mostly a little bit lower, they show some influence of these different weights. And that is what we expected, because if the classification result um, is lower, then the certainty is also lower, and the, the certainty as a weight becomes more in, uh, or gets more influence. So with this, I come to the summary of my talk. So to sum it up, the main problem was the smoothing of the classification results when doing a real classification. The goals were to have the feature space coherence brought by some classification, to have the image space coherence brought by a segmentation, and therewith the edge preservation. And the approach that we uh, have done here is that we did a combination of the segmentation and the classification in parallel, so independently, and we weighted um, the, the results of both by incorporating distance information and certainty information, which results in a classification result that is improved by 4.51% on our test sets on average. So that's it, and thank you for your attentions, and I'm happy to answer questions.